Hello there, brothers and sisters. Timothy here with some more soul mechanics. This is where I find to be one of the best starting points for soul mechanics. Maybe that's because it's an issue that I've faced that I'm currently still working through, but I feel like I've got maybe the most experience in it so far to talk about it. And I think it's a great, it is a great starting point for so many people to get into this stuff because it's right on the sort of edge Tip, tip of our lips it's, it, we're, we're very much close to it and that is to look at the issue of understanding anger so as we get into this some soul mechanics anger is our guide uh it acts as a compass a direction like i say it's a starting point it's the beginning of the thread when you're searching on a piece of sellotape and you're trying to look in the light to find where can I get my nail under to start to unravel this tape? Anger in the soul, in the issues of the soul, this is the, the starting point on that tape. So the starting point, soul mechanics, emotional healing, whatever you want to call it, um, this is the starting point. So we're looking at this, this is a sliced slice of an egg. It could be boiled, it could be not, but uh, I guess it looks more boiled. But in the, the yolk in the middle, the nutritious substance of uh, value that gives life force, if it was to be fertilized, the potential for life, is the representation of our real self. Now, the white in between, buffering it, we can consider that our hurt self. And the shell on the outside is what many people will call our ego, I think facade is a, is a more accurate word that makes sense to me. The shell is the outside layer that's protecting the hurt self, the injured child, the inner child, which is a layer where we get to our real self. And we'll talk about this a little bit more. So the, the real self, um, the yoke, this is when we feel natural happiness and joy just comes upon us. We're, we, we're passionate and we have our desires and we know what they are, we're clear about them and we're, we're fueled each day to go and pursue them. We have confidence and self-belief. We feel creative in what we're doing. Uh, we're, like I say, we're up, we go get in it. We're, we're seizing the day, as they say. Um, and we feel compassionate and kind, uh, sensitive maybe as well. And we're like, you know, softer and listening to people and, and just there's a certain yeah, gentle quality maybe that, that comes when we're in our true real self. And just this final point, who we were when we were children, maybe not exactly, and it was spectrum and on different days and stuff, but for the most part, if you took a, a year section of when we were seven to a year section of now, I think we were, you know, how many days were you in happiness and joy when you were seven years old? Probably most days. How many days did you know what you wanted to do that day? You wanted to go out and play football in the park. You wanted to draw. You wanted to sing and dance. You had confidence in yourself. You know, maybe not most people, maybe not everyone, sorry, but a lot of us, depending on how rough our childhoods were, we might have been softer. We might have actually listened to mommy, you know, and when she was talking about her things, even though they might not listen back, we would have actually like been yeah, hearing, you know. Who we were when we were children is a lot closer to our real self, I feel. And so this is kind of the path back to that. Who you sense you may be on the inside. And some days, some days when just things, just the stars just align right, you might feel these qualities come out of you nowadays. But like I say, maybe it doesn't feel as often or as frequent as when you were younger. And if this is you, then continue to listen. So this is this is what we want to feel, right? Who can disagree with that? This is these things that I've listed here are what we want to feel. So the next layer the hurt self. So this is where all these unresolved childhood emotions uh, are creep in. Fear and sadness are genuinely, uh, generally the, the emotions that are this. This is, when I say unresolved childhood emotions, this is when we felt an emotion as a child and that emotion got shut down by our parent, whether they used anger themselves to try to shut down our emotions that you know you keep up i'll give you something to cry about and then it wasn't safe for us to cry anymore because we would have been attacked physically or something like that or the threat of violence stopped us 
or we're crying in the supermarket and mummy buys us a lollipop to shut us up or an ice cream or whatever it was. We were expressing emotions. It made someone around us uncomfortable and they used their own will to try to control our emotions. And so those emotions just boop, put a plug in it, stored then in our soul, nothing we can do. It's junk in the attic right now and it has to come through the loft hatch, through the doors to come out. We can't just magically make it disappear. If you're sensitive to your life, you might notice that this stuff is still there, um, but we'll get into how to get to that sensitivity. So that your insecurities and self-worth issues are all kind of stored in this kind of hurt self. Um, what we may all sense is there, basically. So we may have this feeling that there's this hurt us, you know, why don't I feel happy that much of the time why do i feel depressed a lot why don't i feel all the stuff from the previous from the real self what you know when you're sensing that's not there you might sense that there's this hurt self that exists within you um and then the final layer the shell to protect this the ego this is to stop us feeling those hurt feelings so because we feel we've imbibes in our, in our bodies and our souls this belief now that it's not safe for me to express these emotions or that other people around me will judge me or they'll try to control me or they'll belittle me if I express my emotions. We've, these beliefs that we got from childhood from our the guardians around us, guardians around us, you know, um, they, we don't feel safe to feel them. So therefore we've created this ego, this facade to stop us having to feel them. So it's like a defense mechanism uh, which we'll get into. And so what what comes along with this defense mechanism to, to keep a plug on the hurt self is a ton of addictions. And these will be physical addictions, emotional addictions, and spiritual addictions. And we'll get into those in more detail. This is when we're chasing comfort and satisfaction over often what is loving or right. We're just, okay, you know, pizza in a movie tonight because i feel beat you know whatever it is we're chasing that that comes in this facade self and then denial denial of truth and then of course the emotion that we're going to discuss today anger is is a facade emotion it's a very um it's not a true hurt self emotion it's a most of the time it's not a true hurt self emotion it is a, a um, emotion to protect those emotions so this is why we're starting on the outer layer to work through it um as i try to get out of the way here we go what we all have to come to face the truth about if we want to grow and heal is this facade self we have to come to, to learn to face the truth about it if you want to get back to that that real self the real us discover the real us so the role of the facade it desensitizes us to our pain so it's literally there to numb us to the hurt the hurt child the hurt self because we just don't like the discomfort of it and it's just a tactic that we've learned it's also a way for us to suppress our fears so literally pain emotional pain physical pain you know and then the the fear you know fear of fear of expressing our emotions fear of our environment fear of survival job money whatever it is um, a way to suppress that is through the facade, through these addictions and stuff, which we'll get into. So the facade is a creation of our own. As a, we created it in childhood as a way to survive because it wasn't safe to be ourselves. Because when we were ourselves, we got attacked. So we had to create this mechanism of bottling up our emotions and then pretend to be a nice boy because uh, mummy judges me on how she perceives me to be but it doesn't matter what i am outside of uh, my parents awareness that that stuff doesn't matter it only matters that i'm able to act like a good boy when i'm in their presence and that they believe that act then it's okay because all the other stuff that's in me this weird stuff that i'm not sure these feelings that i can't talk to them i don't feel safe to talk to them about because they're, they'll judge it or whatever that stuff i need to bury that stuff and this person that's i feel safe to be around the guardians around me, that's who I'm going to have to be. So it's, it's, we've created it as a survival mechanism. So you can have learn to have some compassion for it. We don't need to, to if it helps you to not judge the facade that when you start to recognize it in yourself, it's it's a safety mechanism. Um, so it's our job 
if we, if we choose to accept it to deconstruct this facade and that is what this talk is about is is one of a pretty crucial part of learning to deconstruct it so you can see the facade self is the starting point for our emotional healing to, to work our way in it's a daunting path through <laughs> but like i say if you choose to accept it carry on listening so addictions as we i mentioned this is an important theme within the facade because we'll have many addictions can you name any physical addictions yeah yeah that's that's probably one so we've got food things like binge eating junk food heavy carbs you know that feeling i didn't know that one too well where you eat a lot of rice a lot of pasta a lot of potatoes and you've just it just mm, nice and a bit and sedated basically <laughs> the food sedates me from from the, oh before i ate this food i was hangry hangry you know the clues are there um, but now i feel mm, satisfied um comfort and satisfaction you know alcohol and drugs either to numb us or to stimulate us up or down or whatever we need obviously it's the obvious one sex very common physical addiction i too have this to work through um fitness gym stuff we can all everyone listen to this i'm sure you can relate to training as a way to pick me up pick me oh, i'm feeling down i better go to the gym and as long as i go to the gym i'll feel better afterwards or, you know, rather than sit here with these feelings and think about why they're here oh it's a lot of i'll just go to the gym i'll just go to the gym <laughs> you know that one um or smoking way to suppress grief whatever it is um these each addiction has a precise link and we'll get into all physical addictions cover over emotional addictions so as i said you know feeling a certain way hangry whatever it is emotional way i need to eat then or feeling a bit sad oh, i'll go to the gym that'll pick me up I'll, you know i'll get to feel good about myself i'll get some endorphins running around my body i'll get to see some fit women um rather than feel this sadness and, and sink into this. So there's the sadness, but the physical addiction will cover it over. So what could be the emotional addictions that we have? So this can be demands and expectations of other people. So a demand that, you know, you treat me this way, you better not cut me up in traffic. You better not push in line in front of me. Uh, you better not leave me on hold for 20 minutes. <laughs> These are personal, can you tell? Um, but these demands and expectations that we hold are like emotional addictions. Judgments, judgments of ourselves, judgments of other people. Uh, they exist to make us feel often superior in, in some way or like separate, separate from the issue. And um, yeah, poor me, you know, oh, poor woe is me. Blame, denials minimize it oh it's not that bad justifications oh well yeah everyone does it um blame well that person did it to me denial oh no i don't i definitely don't do that i definitely don't judge people oh, i'm not judging you i'm not judging you mm, maybe you are mate but um, so these are all kind of emotional addictions that you can you can start you know reflect and recognize they'll be the same ones we'll, we'll each have different ones but in our lives it will be the same themes over and over because they'll each have the same root cause of the hurt self will have a precise emotional injury related to it which will have a, a precise um physical addiction as well and it could be multiple physical addic physical addictions for one emotional injury or it could be multiple one physical addiction for multiple emotional injuries so it seems you know. yeah so as we said what kind of judgment you can have superiority or even inferiority people can act and feel inferior and that is also can be an emotional addiction because it's like if, as long as i act this way mummy won't attack me or whatever um or we can be arrogant or carry a lot of self-doubt so there's just a few there and it can go to our beliefs as well e.g that women must be subservient to men and the men is the king of the household and whatever he says we do and we just play our part and therefore i don't have to sort of think for myself i just follow his lead and it makes him feel good when he's he becomes the leader so he runs the household that's the belief that's not an equal men and women i believe there should be equal um we can have roles and agree to roles but we can still you know and the other one of that is so get out the way matrix out the way Whoa. men must protect and provide for women it's a very common uh, belief an unequal one as well so these are the causes of physical addiction then we've got spiritual addictions and 
you know, everyone has different beliefs and I don't want this to appear, you know, but I want to, I still want to share my perspective on this. So spiritual addictions could be like, oh yeah, you know, everything is love and light. So nothing, no, no negative feelings, uh, you know, no, no bad vibes. Isn't that such a con uh, oxymoron? Cause it's a bad vibe in itself to say no bad vibes. So I'm like, nothing I do matters anyway. So I may as well just, you know, eat this, drink this, have sex with this or well, nihilism, similar thing, like, you know, doesn't matter, nothing, doesn't matter. Um, or Jesus died for us. So now I can sin because this guy, you know, he died on the cross. So it doesn't matter if I sin because it's all been, it's all been washed anyway. You know, that's not a very self-responsible belief. You know, you can have the belief, but whether you believe like you don't, you can sin then is a whole different ball game or, you know, act unlovingly. Um, or if Muhammad did it, peace be upon him, so that I can do it as well. Or, you know, certain religious or ritualistic things as well. Like, oh, as long as I do this ritual, then everything will be okay. Superstitions, that kind of thing. Um, not to say, you know, not to say religions are bad or you can't do that stuff. It's just the intention with what you're doing. Like, is are you do, what's your motivation for doing it? Are you doing it because, you know, you're afraid you won't get what you want if you don't do it. If you don't pray every day, then you won't have a good life, whatever it is, you know, or are you doing it? You can do this stuff with, pure motivations but it's, it's checking you know what where the addiction is where it's coming from so all addictions cover over emotional pain um compulsive actions is one way to notice addictions because these are things you do every day from compulsion and if you start to tune into again i'll speak from experience popping into a petrol station to get a snack bar like, oh, I'm driving, I'm bored, I want some stimulus, I pop into the petrol. It's a compulsive action. And like, what, what am I tune into that? I feel bored. Why am I bored? Well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling creative in my head. I'm, when I'm in my own thoughts, they go somewhere negative. So I need to distract myself, whatever it is. So if you notice the day, your addictions will all be kind of compulsively led. And if you can start to tune in or like someone's sent you a wrote a comment that you disagree with on Instagram or a story that you disagree with and <laughs> catch yourself. That's, that's compulsion right there. Um, not to say you don't, don't not just stopping the action. Isn't going to solve it. We need to work emotionally through because there's an emotional cause. We have to work through it emotionally. We can't just, this talk isn't about um, telling people just to stop all your actions and then, and then do nothing and then just live this life of perfect, uh, obedience to the law like it's not about that it's about emotionally understanding ourselves and emotionally working through it so as i said um com they often are chasing comfort and satisfaction and they, they exist to numb pain or suppress fear so you ask yourself as i mentioned before what feeling is driving this action and often the easiest most obvious way to notice addictions is when you are angry you were angry because an addiction didn't get met, whether it was a physical one, the food's not ready, you ordered food, they gave you the wrong food, um, wife doesn't want sex, uh, the, your favorite squat rack at the gym isn't free, something like that, uh, to the emotional ones um, of someone doesn't share your belief or someone deserves to respect you a certain way and that you didn't feel that they gave you enough respect or that that person didn't reply to your message. If you feel angry, there's an addiction, which is an, uh, on a, like an unloving expectation or demand from you not getting met. So you can tune into why do I feel you know kind of entitled to this? So the types of anger we've got, can you name any? If you didn't see them flash up then. Peeved kind of a gentle one, flustered, competitive, aggressive, it kind of flavors of it, like jealousy is a flavor of anger, um, frustrated, you know, full on tantrum, fight the system, like a righteous anger, like F the man, rage to like bloodlust, like blood curdling, like seeing red, like at all costs, I am getting you back. Like this, these are the different types of anger. Um, so why do we get angry? As you can see there, to take back power, to control the situation. Um, the main reasons we get angry. Um, entitlement. 
as a tantrum, didn't get what we want, just st- st- simply put. Um, just to go back to the first few points, stay back power control situation. We're not getting what we want. So if I'm angry and we learn it from our childhood, as our parents did or guardians around us, if I speak louder, then I'm in, I will control the situation. It's it's not really control at all because you're out of control, but it's a way that we've learned mirrored around us to get control. Um, entitlement. Yeah. Like we said, I said in the previous one, it's we're not getting what we think we're entitled to tantrum. And it's a, ultimately it's a way for us to void whatever the feeling is that is beneath below the anger that has been triggered, which is we'll get into a pain. What is the pain? So these are some examples. I'm not being listened to. I'm not being respected. That person doesn't appreciate me. I'm not getting my way. Why don't they trust me? I'm not being understood. So these are all reasons we get angry. These are pains. But ultimately, it's because we're feeling unloved. So I'm not being listened to. I don't feel listened to. I don't feel and that, you know, they don't appreciate me. They don't. They don't respect me. They don't listen to my opinion. They just share their opinion. They don't really respect me. I've been with this person for five years and they still don't trust me. That's that's pretty sad. I've done nothing to show them otherwise. That's there. See, this in this, this is not to say that other people haven't done un- unloving things to us that warrant us to have feelings about it. We can have feelings about what's happened to us. But I'm, what I'm trying to share is that it appears as though anger isn't going to get anywhere. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, right? So this is about growing up, recognizing that, and recognizing that there's a pain below it, a sadness that I feel unloved in some way, untrusted, whatever it is, it ultimately comes down to, man, it hurts. There's something in me that, that feels really misunderstood you know whatever it is but the anger is ah no you're you're not understanding me oh man you know so it's trying to this is just about softening to this understanding and recognizing this might be what's happening when you feel angry so to get to that feeling the sad feeling the unloved feeling we've got to work through the layers but here's a word of warning when we don't when we deny that we have anger we end up being directly unloving to others. Like I said, an eye for an eye. So someone might give you a reason what you feel is justified to be angry back. And they might be unloving to you. But we want to be the bigger man or the bigger woman, you know, not to be the bigger man or the bigger woman, but because it's how we make a difference and it's how we actually change. It's how we actually grow. It's how we actually we'll get to feel happier ourselves and, and we can change the world by changing ourselves, you know? So if someone... When we deny our anger, what happens? So when we're not, we don't recognize we're angry, we don't recognize the sadness below it, we end up acting in it. So we're directly unloving back. We scream at them, we threaten violence, whatever it is, or we're indirectly unloving where we bottle it up and we're seething on the inside. This is one I know well, I know both pretty well, to be honest, <laughs> and we'll get into that. Uh, I, indirectly, so this is like someone explained it perfectly to me, um, not my analogy, but if you have a hose and you're spraying water out and there's a stream of anger, rage, right? But then you put, you bottle it up, you put your finger on the spray and it just, it just sprays everyone in like little way, like less obvious ways, but more like manipulative, sarcastic, controlling, underhanded ways. That's when the anger will come out. So if we're not directly unloving, like acting in our anger, then we can be indirectly unloving where we bottled it up, but then we're like, right, I'm going to get that person back. I'm going to, spit in their soup or something you know um and we can get physical issues from this so if you look at traditional chinese medicine anger relates to the liver so i mean you can get other issues as well but more directly you can create liver issues which is then going to affect that's a very important organ they're all important liver is a very important one if that's not functioning properly because we're living in our anger we're suppressing our anger we're not humbly allowing it to flow to get to the next thing we're going to have liver issues 
and within traditional Chinese medicine, the liver then affects the nails, ligaments in the eyes and stuff like that. Certain organs are connected to other things as well. You can have skin issues as well as that. Chronic fatigue uh, is seems like in most cases suppression of anger. Um, when we're tired all the time, we're angry. We're just not aware of it or we're in such denial of it. Um, weight gain often can be related to suppressed anger, suppressed rage. Um, food is a great way to suppress it. Uh, ultimately, one of the main causes of depression is suppressed anger. It's people that are so numbed out to their anger, sat at home, living on computer all the time, triggered, but then goes to the addiction things to cover up the, the anger and then they feel depressed and they're not they just feel stuck so it's kind of a it's kind of a, a more modern thing where we've all this the internet has helped create it existed before but the internet has helped create facade personas even more than ever i think we, we've all got facades but it almost like more than ever so we're presenting this person online very guilty of it myself you know i'm the first yeah create a facade online to look like a nice guy and then behind the scenes you start to get like depressed and stuff and you're like well i'm this good guy but you're not really if you could actually like tim but you've got all these horrible feelings towards people <laughs> right yeah suicide below depression and suicide a lot of anger a lot of anger at the world not seeing things our way not giving us what we think we're entitled to whatever it is but big reason for suicide denied anger um and one of the outlets a lot of people turn to is sport <laughs> is a great way to get our aggression out isn't it um playing sport watching other people do sport watching other people fight mma ufc definitely um watched a lot of that it's a way to help me kind of like live in the anger and like feed the belief that it's okay to do this stuff because anger is justified, you know? Um, so how do we find our anger then? You know, if, if uh, we don't feel that we're angry or we're just not sensitive to it, well, it is finding us, you, me, the law of attraction isn't just a pretty think of money, give me money kind of thing. It's, it works just like gravity as a physical law that is constant law of attraction is a law that is constantly happening. So things are happening in your life to trigger your anger. You might be sensitive to it. You might be not, but they are happening. Um, you can hide in your house and not go out and it will find you. The TV won't connect. The internet will go out. You'll get an email. Okay. You don't check that. You will develop a cancer or you're getting a bad hip or something will make you try to feel your anger. Are you listening? Are you surrendering to it? So it's bringing events to our lives to trigger these unfelt emotions. We can call it divine truth, call it. And I love the way they term it. God's messenger of truth to you. So it's a messenger giving the truth to you. If you can read the tea leaves. So when we take action, so when we don't hide at home, it allows it more chances to flow. As anyone who has ever traveled knows, <laughs> there is a lot more chances to find emotions uh, or for emotions to find you. So taking action in life, going out, following your desires, doing stuff will allow it to come up. Now I'm going to try to help you understand what to do with it when it does come up. So, but first we want to, discuss our beliefs about anger um so some of us believe it's okay to project anger at everyone we all know those people we might be those people some people don't ever show anger and they think it's a sign of stoicism but internally on some level in their soul unless they've fully dealt with it or they're a little child pretty much all humans have got it they've just buried it very well um and some people, and maybe most of us fall into this, I think I fall into this category, will project it at some people, but then bottle it up for others. Well, at, like around my family and friends, 
less facade. They'll get my rage, my anger will come up quickly. But around certain friends or people I've just met or people I look up to, well, I don't want them to ever see that I'm angry. I could, you know, I, I don't, eh, put on a, a smile. So there's this kind of inequality approach to our anger. So some people are worthy of it. Some people aren't worthy or they're not in the, whichever way around you want to put it, but an, an equal approach. So it's, it'd almost be better to have a fair approach to everyone, but I don't know, maybe, I think so. But um, for me, I think this is where I, I, I maybe lie more. Or there's the other belief or approach to it is that we can own our anger, which is what we see most children doing at a young age. Childlike, humble expression, but without projecting it. So we're expressing it and not projecting it. There's this middle ground that no one really talks about or demonstrates, but it's an option that we'd like the world to know about. So owning anger. First rule, notice when you have been triggered. Then take yourself somewhere private where you can't put and bash at someone and someone can't hear you shout, see you next Tuesday at them with their name from the other room or save it for later where you can find somewhere private if you're in public or at work and you you can't don't feel safe to do it there and then go ape shit then go fucking mental no don't don't attack yourself don't hit yourself but like it has to feel real like it has to happen it has to mm. it doesn't just pet, 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 pet. i'm so mad I mean, that might be how you begin, but in you, you once knew how to do this. It is in your nature. You can have damn good faith that it was once possible for you to do this. You can find a way to do it again. So we're going to talk about techniques. We've got a video here to show. Right, Tim, roll, roll the video. Here is me. me <laughs> that was me right now i'm going to, have to skip through all these slides how do i jump i can't oh, you're gonna to have to see me do this <laughs> nope <laughs> so yeah what you saw there was a video of me getting my anger out and most cases you might have been able to tell it was legit rage. It was legit rage. Like I was seeing red. Events had triggered me, different events, emails, um, booking flights, not wanting, just not wanting to do the work I knew I had to do, just didn't want to do it. Uh, relationship stuff. Any other triggers in that? Yeah, that was pretty much it. Those are kind of the triggers. But the techniques you saw punching bag and a baseball mat, a bat. Uh, I haven't done it with a wooden one, but people that have done it with a wooden one say don't do it with a wooden one because you break it. <laughs> so a metal baseball bat felt great. You could hang it up, but I had it on the bed. Felt great. Feels like you can really go 
get into it. Um, screaming and punching a pillow is an option pretty much all of us should be hopefully be able to have. It works. Sometimes I stand next to the bed and just boom, 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 or just on the floor. Obviously, don't hurt yourself, but go at it. Attacking a wall. You saw me there with um, boxing gloves. My friend Beck showed me this technique. And holding the strap and just kind of attacking the wall, whipping the wall with it. And I had um, her recommendation as well. I think it's blush brushes in my mouth because then I could scream and it it kind of muffled it quite a bit and I could bite down on my jaw and attack the wall. Um, screaming a car is a great one. When you're driving along, like you can scream full volume and you know no one's really going to hear it. Um, and it should feel like steam kind of coming off you. Like it should, you know, you see red, it should feel hot and, and sweaty and like, like a workout, but you just it's just happening. It's just flowing through you. It's coming out of you, you know? Um, yeah. So just to go over it, owning anger, owning it, not projecting it. Right. So notice the triggers. Law of attraction is your friend. Have an outlet, not projecting it. Um, recognizing that it is like an atrovid, an atrophied or a weakened, Muscle, if we've not done this or we've had a different technique for the last 20, 30, 40 years of our life to anger than when we were young and what we're designed to do with it, um, then it's going to be atrophied. And in the beginning, you might not be able to scream and feel like the depth of that scream come from the pit of your soul. Um, but it but it's, it will reawaken. It, it will come through. It's just go to it. Go to it time after time. And you can literally just do this. You don't have to have a trigger as well, just to say this. You don't have to have a direct event happen and then go do it. You can often, you might be able to just, as a daily practice, go, I'm going to spend 10 minutes a day. I'm going to think of something. Probably we can all think of something from our childhood or a recent conversation with a parent, maybe. <laughs> and I'm just going to allow that. And I'm just going to hit this thing and think of that event, whatever not trying to like direct it at them but use what you need to to get it started and you know do it as a practice and notice you might you should notice that it like you feel the engine the system engage coming through from the soul through the body to express this you know or the body pulling it from the soul out um we're undoing programming here we're it's takes reps it takes practice it takes awareness and self-reflection um when you're in it you see red the last one i had the event was so triggering and i was like no and it and when i think now i'm like it's not really that bad that i could think of much worse triggers but in the moment you're like not this you are having me on no you're like it it has to feel real it has to feel like you don't want it to you don't want to be feeling it but you do <laughs> But you, then you have to feel it, you know. Um, yeah, connecting with how much you want what you want. Like, because we, as we said, anger is entitlement. Your addiction's not getting met. Oh, so angry. I wanted that thing. I want that chocolate bar. But you've got to be like parent to yourself, you know. I've made the decision that it is not right for you to have that, Tim. Whatever you feel about it, go feel about it, but you're not having it. Oh, yeah. Connect with how much you want what you want. Um, explain what you're doing to people around you. You probably will want to do that or you don't have to. Um, but but also you don't need them to understand. Like they might think you're weird, whatever. I remember actually my friend Sean I was at his house and he was angry at something and he got a pillow and screamed into it. And I thought, huh. Like, I felt a bit weird about it. I wasn't sure how I felt. And I'm quite an open-minded guy. And I was like, huh. So you maybe you feel that about me, seeing the videos of me getting into my my anger. Um, you might feel, well, that's fucking Tim. It's not that, you know, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> what are you in your feelings for? You know, calm down. Um, so yeah, people might feel that about you, but it doesn't matter. Like, this is a practice of not, not not care yeah not caring like not it doesn't matter like yeah it's maybe maybe you even feel sad about it that they might judge it but at the end of the day um 
You can explain it to them. They don't need to understand. So to be aware of what we might be unearthing, I need to flip this Zoom thing because this is confusing me and my eyes have probably been looking this way the whole time. Um, I can duck, duck is down, is down, right? <laughs> Egg white, the middle layer. So after the facade self, and this would be in different areas of different emotions, you'd be different points and some things won't trigger you at all. It might trigger the person next to you like crazy. Um, but when you're working through it, you might get to some sadness and grief. You might have heard in the, in the final clip of me in my bedroom bashing, I started to sob a little bit. It wasn't full blown tears, but I was in some pretty decent sobs. So this is what we're kind of aiming for. If you want to go there, it's your choice. If you do, I'm not telling you what to do, but as we work through it, you might start to connect with the sadness, the grief of the unloved emotions below or fear or like, or some shame, something like that might start to arise as we like start to some, some like penny might drop on some things that, that might help us to move into this stuff, you know, or it might just flow without knowing what it's even connected to. So just to be aware that's kind of moving through the anger to the next layers if you wanted to go ahead. So further resources, pretty much everything I'm sharing here, I've learned and experimented with thanks to Divine Truth at the top there. Um, Divine Truth, if you just search Divine Truth Anger on YouTube, if you want to do it specifically on the emotion of anger, there's loads of content from them on anger. Any of the content on any of the childhood stuff is just all incredibly useful. I believe it's X marks the spot on the map of soul mechanics. So everything I've shared, if it's interesting to you, got it from them guys. So would recommend check them out. Gabba Marte is one of the main guys you might see touring podcasts right now talking about this stuff. Very humble guy talks about his history, a lot of his anger that he's held from his upbringing with the Jewish family. With I think his mother survived Holocaust or some relation to that. Dealt with a, has got a lot of anger. Remember, slap he slapped his son when he was two when he wouldn't sing happy birthday to him or three or four or something like that. And he talks about it openly. He was angry. He he believed his son owed him to sing happy birthday, and the kid didn't want to. You know, this is how we, what anger does to us. So, but now he's learned to, and he talks about repression. Anger is one of the greatest issues pretty much in society today um on like surface level issues that we can all kind of if we can start to recognize it we can we can really start to turn the tide on it you know we're a big ship with a tiny rudder and this is how we can start to turn that rudder in a better direction is owning our emotions if we each own our emotions i don't know i'm not i can't say that as someone who has owned my emotions fully but trying to do it and i think anger is a big one to start the movie the work really good movie recommend checking this movie out see how men in prison dealing with their emotions dealing with anger it's it's it's, it's uh, eye-opening and tear-jerking so yeah good one so that's the journey in an eggshell um anger and addiction outside layer facade self sadness and fear happiness and joy i can only really talk about where i'm at i'm definitely in the facade self um working my way through maybe sometimes you might have seen a bit of this in some of my jokes or maybe they're all just facade discomfort jokes i don't know i don't know myself well enough yet but uh, that's the journey thanks for joining me on it um let's get a full screen tim see you in the next video bye guys